Disc weight is often discussed in the world of disc golf as being very important to get right so that you can maximize your distance and accuracy potential with any given disc. But truthfully, we were curious to know, how important is it really? Are there actually big differences in flight if you increase or decrease the weight by a few grams or as much as 15 to 20? Well, we here at Justice were very curious about the importance of this factor, so we decided to test the effects of one mold in different weights. And honestly, the results were quite surprising and not exactly what we expected. So without further ado, let's get into it. We want to first start by letting you guys know that this video would not be possible without the support of acerunners.ca. We approached them with the idea and they were kind enough to send us eight discs in different weights of the Latitude 64 Opto River so that we could do this comparison. Their site is so informative, easy to use with fair pricing and the best customer service. Go check them out at acerunners.ca. Now, we decided to use the Latitude 64 River as our test mold since it's a very neutral disc with its minus one turn and one fate. However, please keep in mind that although we tested a very neutral disc, the Optoplastic is the strongest plastic that they offer, the discs were not broken in, and we also tried them in more cooler conditions. So the river, as you'll see, is going to act a little bit more overstable than it would in normal conditions. Now the eight discs that were sent to us were divided into four sets of weights, with each set having matching colored discs thanks to acerunners.ca. And if you want two chances at grabbing one of these Latitude 64 rivers, stay tuned until the end to find out how you could win. First and foremost, let's discuss the distance effect and then we'll get into the accuracy effect of different weights. It's been proven that the distance a disc flies is heavily correlated to the speed at which the disc leaves your hand. And according to the Best Disc Golf Disc YouTube channel, for every one mile an hour of power you apply, you should get around seven feet of extra distance. Therefore, in theory, the lighter the disc, the faster you can throw it, and the more distance you should technically get. So, does this mean our lighter disc flew a lot farther than our heavier discs? Well, not exactly. And this is what was most surprising to us. After throwing the disc over a few weeks in different conditions, and mainly on a flat plane, we were a little confused that the results weren't as compelling as we initially thought they would be regarding distance. For instance, we really thought that we would see a big difference between the Red Rivers, our lightest disc, and the Teal Rivers, our max weight disc, but both Lindsay and I saw minor differences. The differences between the two were usually no more than 5 to 15 feet, with the heavier discs even sometimes outdistancing the lighter discs, especially for myself. Even though the red disc could often perform its full flight with a turn more easily, in other words, its S flight, the extra distance was not substantial and sometimes less than the heavier disc. Therefore, after our testing, we learned that the lack of wind resistance from lighter discs greatly affects the added distance that would normally occur if the wind wasn't a factor. And since the heavier discs penetrate the wind better, this also helped the heavier discs obtain a similar distance to the lighter ones. And when we say wind resistance, we are simply referring to the airspace that the discs must fly through. Perhaps in an enclosed space, the differences in distance would be more substantial, but the wind resistance plays a much bigger factor on distance than we initially thought. But you may be asking, why is it that long distance competitors, long distance competitions still use much lighter discs than heavier discs to get more distance? Well, in our opinion, there are four reasons for this. Reason number one is that they're often throwing discs below 150 grams, and even sometimes as low as 130, which really helps increase the velocity speed, the speed at which the disc is released. Reason number two is that they are often throwing with a tailwind, which therefore pushes lighter discs more easily down the fairway. Reason number three is that tailwinds also make the disc want to fade more, which really helps lighter discs since they tend to turn much more without much fade back. Therefore, the tailwind makes discs more overstable, which allows the disc to hang in the air a lot longer since it tries to complete more of a full S flight. 
And reason number four is that they are using more overstable discs to really counteract that added turn that lighter discs create. Therefore, if you're trying to buy a disc for maximum distance with less of a concern about accuracy, the lighter you go, the more overstable your mold should be, just to counteract that added turn that lighter discs create. So now let's talk about how disc weight affects the accuracy of a disc. And from our testing, this is what we feel is a lot more influenced by the disc weight than the distance it flies. Now, most of you already understand that a lighter disc is gonna be harder to control than a heavier one. And that's because the added weight allows you to feel more of the disc, which really helps with rhythm and timing. Overall, I typically use max weighted discs for everything below a seven speed to really get a better feel for the disc and in turn be more accurate. And the results I found with the river really helped prove this point. The heavier teal and white discs were often found in close proximity to one another, whereas the red and pink discs were often a lot less consistent with their accuracy. And when I tested their accuracy on a specific hole at my hometown course, the results showed that most of the heavier discs ended up closer to the basket more consistently. As for the 158 gram discs, the loss of accuracy affected me more than Lindsay due to our differences in throwing speeds. Personally, I could throw it and be accurate with it sometimes, but the lack of feel made it harder to time my release, resulting in very inconsistent throws. Sometimes I would park it, other times it would be way offline. It also didn't help with my confidence, feeling like I needed to adjust my throw to be able to throw it properly. Now with Lindsay, her results demonstrated that she can get similar distance with all four of the discs, but the heaviest and lightest discs often resulted in more misfires and less accuracy than something like the somewhat lighter pink discs. Now, although her favorite disc was the lightest disc, the 158 gram red disc, because of the comfort and her ability to throw it with ease, it still wasn't as consistent as the pink disc. So we can conclude that she should probably be using something around the 165 to 168 grams to still keep that comfort, that confidence, but also to give her some more accuracy. However, does this mean that Lindsay and I should just stick to one weight for all of our discs? Definitely not. So let's get into how do you know what type of weight to throw? To be honest, knowing the correct weight to throw can be very difficult, but it's also a more misinformed way of thinking about weight since it's very dependent on the shot type that you're trying to perform as well as the conditions that you're playing in. However, there are a few tips that we can give you to make a more informed decision when you're looking to buy some discs and you're comparing some weights. Firstly, for most players, it's good to stick between the range of 160 to 180 grams for most of your discs. The lower you go below 160 grams, the worse the trade-off becomes between distance and accuracy. In general, there's a point at which the reduced mass has a negative return effect versus the wind resistance. Secondly, putters and mid-ranges should really be kept closer to those max weights because those discs are more about accuracy and distance and the added benefit is just so huge. It really helps you control those discs a lot better. Thirdly, the ideal flight of a driving disc is a disc that flies straight, slightly turns to the right, and then fades back, allowing the disc to get its maximum yield, its maximum flight. So. If your disc is fading too much to the left when throwing flat right hand backhand, you probably need a lighter version of it. And if the disc is turning too much to the right when throwing flat, you may want to use a heavier disc instead. And lastly, you sometimes need a heavier or lighter disc for specific situations as previously mentioned. For example, heavier discs are great for skip shots and lighter discs are great for throwing uphill. Now, these are only two reasons on why you would want heavier and lighter discs. And we already did a video on this, so we'd rather not repeat ourselves. Check it out if it's something you're interested in. So after all of our testing, what we learned is that wind resistance has a great effect on the added distance you'll achieve 
with the lighter disc. We saw almost negligible differences between discs of just a few grams apart, and the difference between discs that were 15 grams apart were not as substantial as we initially thought. However, from learning about the professional long distance throwers and how they use lighter discs, but ones that are more overstable for long distance drives, we can assume that the neutrality of the river probably didn't help since the disc did not have the fight required to let it fade back which would have helped the disc stay in flight a little bit longer and get more distance. In addition, we also found out that the accuracy is much more negatively affected when using too light or too heavy of a disc, showing that accuracy should be much more of a concern over distance when choosing weight. If you choose a disc that's too heavy or too light, you may put yourself at risk for more misfires or in other words, less accurate shots. Now this isn't to say that you should shy away from lighter discs. 99% of players are gonna benefit from lighter discs, especially for their distance drivers since they lack the form and speed to really get them to fly properly. Lastly, if you're looking to pick up a specific mold and you have a variety of weights to choose from, in our opinion, feel and comfort go a long way on how the disc is gonna perform for you. That mental confidence boost that you get can truly go a long way in how your disc performs. Well, we hope that this test video helped you better understand the differences that weight can have on the distance and accuracy of your throws. If you want more disc golf content, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any justice moments. And if you want more exclusive content, check out our Patreon and join our community. Oh yeah, and one more thing. If you'd like two chances at winning one of these rivers of your choosing, be sure to subscribe to Just Disc and comment below on what type of content you'd like to see in our future videos or tell us which videos you've enjoyed the most. Thanks as always for watching Just Disc and being a part of our community, and we'll see you in the next one. Merci beaucoup et à bientôt.